Hey guys, I'm Dan Hatch and this is Hatch's Recreational Engineering and today we're going to be launching a new segment of the channel titled Build Blueprint. So to kick that off, we're going to be here with Ray Clark and his 97 Ford F-250 where he's going to show us uh, what he's got in this thing. So let's check it out. So uh, tell us a little bit about your truck here. So this is a 97 F-250 yeah, that you've owned for uh, how long? Uh, six years now. Um, bought it kind of all stock. The gentleman before me started redoing it, then ended up just getting rid of it. Then I bought it, planned on daily driving it, changed it over to more of a weekend toy. First thing I pretty much did to it right off the bat was lifted it. Is this the uh, the same lift that it had in when you originally you know lifted it or is this no. a new, new phase of the truck? This is the newest phase that happened to it. And what's this got in it right now lift wise? This is a six inch skyjacker spring with a three inch PMF block in the rear. The front end is all sky engineering, high steer with crossover track bar. So you actually took most of this truck apart after you got it yourself and yeah. reassembled it exactly how you wanted it, right? Yeah, so not even like the first day of me owning it, I ripped the interior out of it and had to fix the front end. <laughs> and the brakes. And the, and the brakes. Yeah, and the brakes. <laughs> I test drove it and the guy's like, ah, oh, yeah, give it a little gas. And I got in it a little bit and went to go get the brake pedal. We almost rear-ended a mail truck. <laughs> coming down the road but yeah with a big heavy truck uh, stopping's important <laughs> this wasn't stopping very well at that point in its life um the front end in this originally was a twin traction beam since it is an f-250 uh they had big drop brackets in the front of it and stock springs so the thing was just not right and they have solid axle swapping it so it's technically an f-350 now it's got 350 springs in it Show us what you did to the engine. So you're actually a diesel mechanic, is that right? Yeah, I work on heavy equipment and a diesel mechanic. So so all this has been done by you? Yeah. So probably four years ago, we pulled this engine out. Uh, actually, right on this road that we're standing at right now, there's a line of traffic, and I went to go pass them, and the trans came apart when I went and passed everybody. So at that phase of its life, I... Pulled the engine out, the trans out, this rad support got replaced. It's done to the engine. It's got a T4 kit with a SXE 369 on top of it. Old ATS intercooler that was actually made for two years for these trucks. Then injectors, they're full force 205 over 80s. It's got comp springs in it, full force headers, pretty much MBRP exhaust on it. It's nothing too crazy it's pretty street tamed this is the current setup that's with it now i mean originally before this i had a bunch of other stuff on it but i like this setup it's nice it's fun builds power and it's drivable yes i mean you you guys hop in this truck all the time and take it on some uh, yeah. pretty good road trips <laughs> we uh since i've owned it i want to say i've only put like fifteen thousand on it then two years ago now, since last year was COVID, me and Tori did almost eight, or actually about 10 truck shows with this thing. That year alone, we put 8,000 miles on this truck, and it didn't skip a beat. Nice. Ever. And it actually it actually placed uh, really well in a few of those shows, right? I think you took home uh, yeah, a we, placing at Carlisle, right? Yeah, we took first place out in Carlisle. Uh, we actually took 
Taking home three first place trophies that year. You can hear this thing coming down the road yeah. from five miles away. <laughs> uh, so the way that the way that you've got the exhaust set up on this thing now, it it sounds it sounds pretty good. Yeah, we, tried, we actually mellowed it out a little bit this past year after we uh, traveled around with it a lot. <laughs> the previous years, they originally had a straight pipe through it. I I couldn't take it anymore. I'm like, we got to put a, we got to put a muffler. In this thing. <laughs> it's getting ridiculous. It's but awesome. It runs good. So. So what do you, what do you got going right now for brakes? Uh, stock brakes no, on this, or no. you've actually gone to what a drilled and slotted rotor? Yeah, so these are drilled and slotted rotors on this power stop on the front. Rears are drums, but they have a uh, the shoes in it. I forget what brand shoes I put in it. I want to say they were also power stop makes a kit, but I think stops good. It's stock front calibers on it. Power stop drilled and slotted rotors with pads. So it stops good for what it is, for being a bigger truck on bigger tires. And how about you tell us about some of the uh, the suspension setup that you got going on here? I, I know you got the Fox Racing shocks on here. The whole truck is locked up by a custom set of track bars on this thing. Then we ended up, a buddy of mine actually made the bars for me, then I made all the brackets for this. So it's got Fox shocks, front and rear, uh, like we said, six inch Skyjacker springs. I originally saw a truck on Truck Trend back in high school when I bought this thing. It was blue and silver, and it had a very similar track bar setup with tire size. And I fell in love with it. It was designed to be a pulling truck. So at that point, when I built this, I was like, I'm gonna build a pulling truck out of this. It's gonna look <laughs> cool. Ended up never hooking it to it a ended, sled. It ended up so far from that. <laughs> ended up never hooking it to a sled <laughs> once. And now I got a truck that's locked up like a brick that rides down the road. <laughs> I mean, it, it puts, it locked this truck up big time with the traction bars on this thing. But what do you think you're making horsepower and torque wise? You have, have you ever, have you ever actually dynoed it or? No, but so similar setups with this, I've seen right about 500 at a thousand foot pounds. Okay. So I'm going to say it's, probably between like 480 and 510 if i had to make a guess for power wise at a thousand somewhere right around a thousand foot pounds but yeah. that's not bad that's not no, bad for a no. truck that you're driving three and a half hours <laughs> on the street you know oh yeah it, it will definitely it definitely melts the tires off of it i've seen that <laughs> <laughs> it, it will definitely kill some tires and the best part is it still has got air conditioning in it when you get yeah. stuck in traffic. So yeah, I everything I ever make power in is <laughs> uh, is hot. <laughs> <laughs> but I mean, it it's pretty it, it's pretty much a stock motor besides injectors, turbo, and valve springs and headers on it. And the the new motor that I'm gonna build, I'm gonna put a cam in and do some head work to it. But besides that, it's nothing too crazy. Yeah, so you actually have future plans to take this thing back apart again, right? Yeah, I would like to make it a five-speed or five or six-speed truck. I'm still undecided with what I want to do. Uh, currently looking for a frame rail that's perfect that we could send out and get it powder coated. I have a almost virgin 7.3 for this thing that's only got 20,000 miles on it. There you go. Well, you better stop looking on the East Coast because you're not you're not finding you're not finding any uh, perfectly no you know rust free anything out here. So no, not at all. Especially since any of these trucks that have come from out here have all been for the most part used used, used and abused. abused yeah. I mean these these trucks in the '90s and early 2000s were everyday work trucks that yeah. that got driven hard and, and used uh so so to find anything out here that's even half as clean as what you have is is almost impossible which the crazy part with him saying that actually is that the original owner of this through the previous owner that i bought this from the gentleman used this for his business and he was a construction business then he towed his boat with it on the weekend so when i found this i was like Holy cow, I'm surprised that this thing's even in half as good shape as it was at that point of its life. But can't complain about it one bit. Ended up, like you said, pulling it apart and going through it and going through its renditions of life here. And <laughs> probably on rendition 
233 by now, but... Oh, well, it never ends. <laughs> it never ends. Once once you have a project vehicle, it just uh, it goes through... I feel like most project vehicles, anyway, they go through phases where you build it, you you like it for a while, and then it comes apart. I mean, every every once in a while, somebody hits that one yeah. that one look, and they just they love Stick it, and that's it. it. And uh, but th this has been through multiple phases. I mean, uh, the first time I saw this truck, it, it didn't have the the paint on it. A good buddy of mine actually did the stripes and all the painting on my father's show truck back in the '80s. That's awesome. And. Uh, I pestered him, actually, DC lettering and design in South Plainfield. I was bothering him, like, Daniel, you got to do it. And uh, he ended up remaking this design down the side of it. I mean, he blew it off the wall with it. I was surprised when I picked it up. I put it all in his hands. I'm like, it's yours. Well, as cool as this truck is, I think that it's that stripe that really separates this thing from every other one of these that I've ever seen. Yeah. That something about that stripe and that like '80s show truck look is really what makes this thing stand so far out from other F250, F350s of this era. I mean, this thing has that hardcore '80s look to it. You know, with the the aluminum wheels on it, with the the BF Good trains, with the the raised white lettering. I mean. You went for that 80s show truck vibe, but with a newer, higher yeah. horsepower truck. Yeah. So I think that I think that it's you know the red with the traction bars and that stripe that really just makes sets this thing apart from any of the other ones that I've seen. So uh, you want to show us what you did with the interior because you've yeah. you've done some uh, some pretty serious interior mods on this thing. So two years ago we ended up finding these lightning seats online that were actually in a tow truck and. Uh, I couldn't say no. I I wanted them. Uh, I was looking around. For I don't them. blame you. I mean, because they're they're mint. You guys didn't have to recover these or anything. They no, they were just like this. That's how they were. We cleaned the living hell out of them and uh, put them in. Now on the lightning seats, are these originally painted like no. this, or did you guys do that? So we did that. So the side panel on it was actually like from I guess when jumping in and out of the tow truck, they like banged them up pretty good. So. I sat there, sanded them, and painted them, wet sanded them, and polished them out. Because they look great. <laughs> I mean, the 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 they look like they were made for this truck. Which yeah. that that's what's cool about the interior in this thing is it it is a fully custom interior for this style truck. But you've made it look like it's supposed, supposed to be to, factory. It's supposed to be in there. Then like the back seats out of a I want to say early '80s F250 extended cab, just so it matches the front seat. Since as many as you know. A lot of these, this interior is supposed to be that lighter gray, not the darker gray. So, yeah, it looks cool. You went with uh, billet door handles. Are, are those billet door locks and power window? Yeah, a gentleman actually on Instagram I was talking to, and he ended up sending me a set of. He was a uh, nothing too crazy though. This is one of those trucks where, like, the more you look at it, the more little details that you start to pick up on. I mean, there's there's so many, like, subtle things that you've changed on this that look like it's stock. Yeah. But they, I mean, if anyone knows these trucks, these things came with plastic door handles, and they were yeah. crap, and they, they break they off, break and they the suck. the first day you go and pull on them, <laughs> and you'll be standing there like, now what? But then, like, even the upfitter switches in the dash over there, I don't know if you got a chance to see them. Those are actually out of an 06 6 liter. A lot of people ask, like, who makes that? Well, it's actually a Ford part that fits in that cubby hole. But it's awesome. Go around the other side and you can show us the gauge setup that you have in this thing. So you went with uh, pillar gauges. Yeah, it's got Ford Racing pillar gauges by Autometer in it. Um, that little monitor down at the bottom there, that's made by... Uh, it's actually made by Edge, but TS Chips made it for a couple years. Put that in there, and you can pretty much run the whole truck off that monitor. And it works good for what it is. It's simple setup, nothing too off the top. Now, and again, you have you know Ford Racing gauges, so it looks like it's supposed it, yeah. to be there, and. Uh, the pillar setup's cool because I guess companies make these uh, these pillar yeah, holders these that pillars that to it. look exactly. I mean, it's it's basically a factory A pillar, but it's got the gauge, gauge pods in it, it, so it it looks like it's uh, again like it's supposed to be there. 
Oh, what do you got going on with the transmission in this thing? Because I know I know you said you blew up the first one. <laughs> oh, so yeah, we're what on two or three now? Or? This is we're on the drive for five with this one, and uh, pretty much there's a couple little things tweaked in the valve body on it. Nothing crazy. Then uh, it's got a good converter in the front of it, a triple disc converter. And that's about it with this the transmission tunes through SDK. Then as far as like uh, body stuff on it, I mean you did you did some body work on this. Uh, the hood is a custom Cal hood, right? Yeah, that's so the hood's from Cervini's buddy of mine did all, all the body work to it and made it way better than I could ever expect with it. Oh yeah. The only other body modification really on this is the roll pan. Otherwise, the body itself is the way it should be. Uh, what do you got going on for fuel delivery? I know we didn't cover that, so. So, anybody, a couple of my friends I've made this fuel system for, it's pretty much two fuel filters mounted up in the frame rail here. Then on the inside of this frame, I have a Fuel Lab Prodigy pump, which any of you that know diesels know that that's like one of the highest flowing diesel pumps out there. And that's what we're running i have number six line all the way up to the top of the motor with it to make it run and you've actually you're, you've become like the guy in new jersey <laughs> to help build one of these trucks uh yeah. you've you've done what two, two or three of these for buddies and friends yeah. and, yeah. and local guys yeah. that are trying to set one of these things up the right way yeah a lot of i, I, I could probably count about you Two or three, you say two or three, and right in my head, I got like <laughs> oh, still like eight or ten of them that pop right into my head immediately. That a lot of these trucks are set up how I wanted them for how these guys wanted to drive them each day, and they're they're good. They run good when done right. Well, you figured out just how to hit that perfect mark <laughs> where you have high horsepower and a fun driving truck that's not ready to grenade in 30 seconds, <laughs> but uh, also be, you know, super tame and streetable. So you, you've, and this truck's proved it. I mean, this truck's been all over the, you know, the East Coast at different oh, shows yeah, and, and meets and. We've driven this thing all over the place and I can't say enough about it. It's fantastic. All right, so another thing that we wanted to cover with you guys is this is Tori, Ray's girlfriend, and together they're the OBS couple. So uh, I'll put a handle to their Instagram in the, you know, below in the comments. But uh, the two of you guys actually found something that this area was missing for, for a long time and developed your own truck show. Yeah. So uh, I wanted to talk about that because, I mean, I... I was at a local place with a truck that I just built, and you guys approached me and invited me to a truck show, and it, it made a huge impact yeah. in, in my life. I mean, I had something that I thought nobody else would think was cool, <laughs> and you guys thought it was cool. cool yeah. Uh, so you you basically developed a show that, you know, a large portion of your show showcases OBS style trucks like your, you know, what you guys have, but you've accepted everything and everybody's <laughs> different builds and styles yeah. and trucks, and uh, we're what on the. You guys are going to be on your third, third year, year. Yep, yeah. right? Third year. And every every year that I've I've been there every year, yeah, because uh, it's been awesome. But every year that I've been there, it just keeps getting bigger and bigger and bigger. So, I wanted to talk about that a little bit, give you guys a chance to talk about that a little bit, and uh, just to, you know, where did the idea come from, uh, and how did we get to where we're at today? You know? Yeah. So this year, like you said, it's the third year. Um, this year, it's on September 11th, 9/11. Uh, from 10 a.m. to 4. So, like Dan was saying, everything is welcome. From we have had mud trucks to full-blown show trucks to Jeeps, uh, Broncos, oh my God. bag bag uh, yeah. low riders. Last, I mean, it's it's, it's yeah. all been there. Last year we had an awesome ice cream truck come out. And he actually sells ice cream. You know, full-blown old-school ice cream truck. Really cool. There's some wood carving the one year. Yeah, that was first cool. Year, yeah. Some live wood carving. Yeah, my friend came out and he's carving wood. And uh, last year we had army trucks, fire oh, yeah. trucks, model T's. Yeah, it's really it's good. yeah. Any Everything. anything you can imagine as far as you know, cool trucks. It's it's been there. Like like they said, from show trucks to mud trucks, the lowered. Uh, you guys accept everything. Yeah. And, uh, mm -hmm. 
if if you guys want to pre-register for the show, uh, I'm going to put up a, a link to their flyer, which has the pre-registration and the address to send the pre-registration fee to. But you guys also accept registration the day of the show, yeah, too. Yeah, yeah, you can show up, pre-register, whatever you want to do. Uh, if you pre-register, it's a bit cheaper. But, yeah, and the place it's at, it's at um, the local hunting club. It, the proceeds go to the 3D Archery League that uh, Ray's parents actually run. So it just helps that league, you know. Grow. Yeah, grow. Yeah. It makes it just better with the targets and the course and all that. So it just helps out a ton. Yeah, it, it, it's a cool show. And it's a, it's something that benefits, a, you know, a local establishment in the community. So if you guys aren't doing anything September 11th, make sure you uh, you head out and check it out. Uh, you guys serve food. Yeah, we uh, food. It, it's yeah, It's all music. there. Food, music, DJ. And uh, like I said, every, every year it keeps getting bigger and bigger, so it's going to be a good one. I'm, I'm excited. Yeah. I don't have a truck, so, <laughs> so maybe we'll have to build something, find something, just get, I, I, I just got to get there and something. And spectators are free, so if you yeah. want to come out and just check it out, you know. Just, Plenty of parking, yeah, it's, it it's in the shade. Yeah. Uh, I mean, most of the, most most of the of show fields are in the shade, but uh, it's, it's a great time. So make sure you guys check it out. and. Uh, I think that's going to be it for this video. Thank, thank you for uh, showing thank us your you. truck, and uh, I appreciate you being the guinea pig for the uh, the build blueprint segment. So. Yeah. All right, thanks.